Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT. And in this video, we are going to be looking at an add-on mod called Collegian UI. I hope I have pronounced that correct. I believe it comes from the French. Um, <laughs> Collegian UI. So uh, it's got UI in it. So this is all about the look and feel. And I thought this was a useful one to look at now. We've just been looking at the version 13 of Foundry and the fact that that has made some changes to the UI. I am in version 12 at the moment. We will look at version 13 uh, towards the end of this video. But this um, this particular mod, Collegian UI, allows us to change some of our UI elements. It works in V12 as well as V13. So it's kind of pertinent now. If you're kind of, I like the look and feel of the 13, but I'm not ready to update. Yeah, you could might want to use this instead. Or you may hate the version 13 changes and you may want to make your own uh, adjustments to that using this particular mod. So let me activate this. Now, bearing in mind, we've got a very standard foundry look and feel to this. I'm going to activate this mod. There we go. And suddenly everything looks different. Now, I've already played with it and put a few settings on because I just wanted to have a little whiz through. And loads of this is customizable. So straight away, it looks different. So let's work through. I mean, you can see what some of the differences are by default or rather not default because I've turned some of those on. Let's configure settings. Right. There's lots of them here. Lots of things we can do. So first of all, custom fonts. That's a fairly standard thing to be able to do. Um, but if you're running particular campaign or something, um, you're doing some kind of futuristic thing, you might want to change some of your typefaces and stuff to match. Notice this is world settings. Okay, so you might want to do those if you want to. Brilliant. Themes and styles. Now, there are some built-in themes and styles already. So you can see there's, these ones are already in here. Um, Carolidian Teal, Royal Blood, Gambit Blue, etc. And that is affecting um, the borders and things around these. So you, can you see at the top right there, we've got that red border because I've got it on Royal Blood. If I change that to Gambit's Blue, that changes to Blue, etc. We've Our scroll bar is Blue, etc. So it's, it, is it a big impact? No, but it's part of configuring everything to how you would like it. Now, do notice at the bottom here, um, sorry, in the middle here, uh, you can force these styles on other modules like Combat Carousel, Dice Tray, Monk's Scene Navigation, um, Hurry Up, etc. So it will copy those effects over to those things as well, which is really nice. That's I love that little touch, the fact it will do that and it will change those interfaces if you want it to. There's also a section here for you to write your custom CSS. So if you know how to write CSS, uh, you can add your own stuff in there and, and change pretty much anything you like, which is really powerful. My CSS is poor, so I'm not touching it. <laughs> but if that's your thing, you can absolutely go and do that. Uh, chat message options. So we can enable styles for chat messages. Um, so just popping stuff in there, that's going to come up green because this is the player color. Now, at the moment, I'm in the DM and my game master color is green, um, but you can do it by role type, etc. Uh, and you can also do like, use left board only. Loads of options for customizing this. Now, of course, because it is the UI, it will refresh your UI quite frequently when you change those stuff. Have a little look in the, um, in the message box here. You can see we've got this gold color around some of these and then we've got green where the game master said hello and stuff. So it's actually going to adjust those um, in accordance with your requirements. Really nice little quality of life thing um, just helps it stand out which is great. And of course you can combine some of these with the default um, foundry settings or your game engine settings if you want to uh, to play around with it a lot more but because this is a UI thing there's no point in me showing you this is how you set it up because every single one of you is going to have a unique idea of how you would like it to look and feel so um, you know <laughs> there's not a lot of point in me trying to force that upon you um, right back to the settings here uh, so left control bar this is this bit up the top here so where we've got our players and stuff like that over on the left, we can configure that as well. Now it's currently on small. 
Um, one of the things you'll notice is it automatically hides the Foundry logo, If but you can have that on if you want to. I'm going to make mine large because I do have a large screen. Those icons are quite small. Um, so I can pop this up if I want to and I can um, decide what that bottom safe area is. In other words, it doesn't cram off the bottom of the screen too far. Um, so yeah, we're clicking that. There we go. My icons on the left are a lot bigger now. So I've got control over things like that, which is great. Uh, enabling floating camera dock. So you can position anywhere. That's built into this as well. Scene navigation. Those of you who are paying attention will have probably spotted at the top. I've got a very strange scene navigation. Here it is. Loads of options here. Now I know a, quite a few people. I see comments not necessarily on these videos, but just round on Discord and things like that, about how much people dislike the standard Foundry scene navigation. Uh, to the point where it's one of the one of the Foundry development points is to overhaul some of that um, because it's very basic and people don't like it. Well, here's a solution for you. Uh, you can obviously disable it and not use this function at all if you want to, but you can see some options here, enabling custom scene navigation, um, using folders for it, uh, to click the list, root folders, uh, you can have it starting collapsing if you want to, um, toggle the scene navigation, hover, uh, that's all, you can see that's all player settings. Okay, and then at the bottom we've got the Game Master settings, the world settings, uh, enable double click to view, activate, enable back button, so back to the last scene or whatever you want it to be, scene previews, etc, etc. So, okay, great. But what does all that mean? Well, up here you can see I've got these scenes, but I've also got folders. So I can look in those folders for particular scenes. Now, these ones are greyed out because I have not got them as show on the scene navigation. But I can still look at them. I can still get to them. And obviously these are ones from Curse of Strahd that I've got imported into my testing world. Um, but yeah, I can go back uh, and click on these. I can go back and you know choose which folders I want, go all the way back up to the top. There we go. I can go to my encounter scenes uh, and Traveller's Rest, which, which I've broken the map on. wasn't expecting that. Uh, I can go to the Blue Water Inn, which is a standalone scene uh, that is in the navigation. So it's just a different way, and you saw there's loads of options for you to customise how this works for you, um, but it's just a different way of doing this. So again, just changing that user interface to make it much nicer for you personally uh, and how you want Foundry set up. Um, I'm not going to go through all the options of scene navigation because there's loads and loads of different ways you could choose to set that up. You just need to know that you can, uh, and then go and play with it. Uh, disable UI. In this client, if a player doesn't want to use it, you can dis they can disable it. Okay, so individual players can say, I don't want to use that, I'm going to disable it, and it will give them the normal foundry experience. Fine, yeah, brilliant. Uh, general scale for the UI. When it's set to small at the moment, I'm going to make it large. Uh, and there we go, suddenly everything is a fair bit larger. Okay, so, I mean, again, for videos and stuff like that, you guys would probably appreciate me having stuff. Blah, blah, blah appreciate me having stuff larger and we had that discussion when we looked at um, v13 and there was definitely um, some positive feedback from you guys about being able to use that to make it slightly bigger which is really useful because um, you know there's no point in me doing this if you guys can't follow along um, enable macro layout this module enlarges and generalizes uh, centralizes numbers on the macro hotbar and you're thinking well, where is the macro hotbar it, it's disappeared it's collapsed Okay, because there is a collapse macro bar that's currently active, so the macro bar was collapsed here. But you can see bottom left, I know it's tiny down there. Um, I'll try and remember to zoom in in the edits. You can see that we've now got better numbering. This is a bit bigger. It's actually much, much clearer to see. Much clearer to see. In fact, I'm going to turn off the macro collapse bar to leave that on. Enforce dark mode to players. So do not enable this if using force client settings or similar modules. This sets Foundry's UI theme on the player's client to dark if they have it set to browser default. If they specifically have it set to light, it will respect their choice. So if their browser default is set, chances are their default will probably be um, the light 
theme anyway, but this will force it to be dark theme. Now again, that's something that I would generally use, especially for things like Curse of Strahd and stuff, that's a bit darker and a bit moodier than some of the other games. Um, if I was playing something like Humblewood, I might not want to make it dark mode, uh, because I'd be doing something a lot more fluffy. Um, auto hide player list so that's on so yeah I've got my player list over in the bottom left hand corner down by my macros and of course that's auto hiding that for me I'm going to turn that off as well so that will pop up once I save these changes so let's save those changes and there we go we've got our macro bar and our player list have stayed up so lots of different things that we can do with this so you can customize the look and feel of it I specifically like the um the fact that you can put your own css in if you know that that's really really powerful i like the fact that you can customize these if you want to you can completely change the navigation system as well now i know there's probably going to be lots and lots of other things that i've sort of missed that you can do that's a little bit cunning and whatever but remember this is just kind of an overview to let you know that these are the key functions that this thing can do personally i think it's really nice um, it just gives you that flexibility, right? That flexibility you might not have uh, within the foundry itself. So I'm going to jump over to version 13 now and then we can have a look and see how this affects version 13. I'll see you over there in just a few moments. Right, so here we are. We're over in Foundry version 13 now. Now, just remember, of course, that we can do lots of UI, UI stuff in uh, Foundry 13 now, which is really, really nice. So what can Collegian actually offer us here? Uh, please note that uh, I have reset all the default things back to their normal sizes because rather than like, it's like, well, hang on, what's Foundry doing and what is this mod doing? Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we don't get confused with those. So let's go and add Collision UI on. Really, really important note. If you are installing this mod and you are on version 12 of Foundry, you need to make sure the mod version begins with a one. So it will be one point, whatever it is, I uh, can't remember what one it's on right now. Um, it was literally updated um, about 10 minutes ago when I'm making this video. If you are using this in version 13, you need to make sure the mod version you're using is two point something. Okay, so there's two branches. There's the version 12 one and the version 13 one. You, if you can't use the wrong mod on the wrong version of Foundry, it will give you JIP. Ask me how I know. <laughs> right, let's save the settings. Yes, I need to reload my UI. Thank you very much. And immediately, not a huge amount has changed, not massively. Uh, let's go look at those uh, settings for the mod, because the whole, and I really like this, the, the, the menu, the settings menu has changed in the version 13 version of Collegian UI. Um, and I think it's really slick, I did a really good job here. Notice that we haven't got anywhere near as many options here because they're all under the configure options here. Uh, this is where you can set all of those settings. So the UI elements that you wish to use and you can have them fading in and out if you want to uh, and you can turn on the custom layout if you want to as well. I'm going to not have any of these fade out for this purpose. Let me just save that and go back into the configuration um, because it's easier for you guys to see. But obviously you can choose. Uh, theme and styles so this is very similar I mean you can see on the right hand side that I've got this red this red color over the dark which is really really nice and as before we can change that it's now gold um, although personally you know for Curse of Strahd I would be sticking with red not that I'm running that in version 13. Um, so we can change that theme we've still got this enforcing those styles on the other modules although that also includes the YouTube player mod um, is on there as well We've got our custom CSS, of course, that's still there. We can still customize our fonts just like before, and we can still do our chat messages just like before. So we get these our colored borders and things uh, depending on our individual player color. Now, you will know I've moved over to Foundry. Um, it, gen it randomizes the color for my Game Master uh, login. It's currently this pink color. Um, <laughs> okay. Fine, whatever. <laughs> I haven't set it as a specific color, so it is different in this one. Um, so use left border only, so we can see that we've only got it down the left hand side, but of course we can turn that off. So when I save it, it will be the full border if that's how I want to do it. All good. 
uh, scene navigation so we've still got that you can see you'll still see at the top I've got my scene navigation I've only got two scenes that's going to work very similar to how we looked at it so I won't show you that again all of those settings there again player versus uh, the game master settings is all there we've got our playlist stuff here I've got auto hide turned off but we have got show avatars so if you look all the way down in the bottom left hand corner where not only have we got the game master but we've got an image now I haven't got an image for that I could go to user configuration and I could upload one um, but because uh, but I don't actually have one at the moment uh, I should be able to find one in there I'm going to select that one uh, and for this purpose, let me just save that. Uh, there we go. So bottom left-hand corner, we can now see we've got a picture of my barbarian with... <clears throat> oh, my voice cracked. I'm a bit too old for my voice to be breaking. <laughs> um, we've got my game master there and we've got, uh, we've got my image that I'm using for my token. So that was nice and easy. We could do that. Uh, and we've got these left controls. We can only hide those secondary controls. There's no options here for changing the size of that UI because we can now do that in Core Foundry, can't we? So obviously there's fewer options because Foundry now carries a chunk of that workload, which is really good. Um, that's a positive thing. Core Foundry functions are easier to maintain. They tend to be more efficient. And that is not a comment on this mod or the, this mod developer who is more than likely watching this video and is going to be saying something in the comments and probably pointing out all of the things that is like, oh, you didn't talk about this and you didn't say that. Read the comments of these videos. I always try to pin the most useful comment, um, the one that I think is like, oh, yeah, I missed that and people will want to know. So it's always good to do that. I'm rambling. But of course we can, yeah, core function, we can change those interface things if we want to. I can put that scale up. Um, I can't remember what we decided it was. I think it was a 7 and a 1.2. That might be, it might be a bit excessive. I'm in a browser window, so it's slightly, uh, slightly different. I think that was, that was about, that was much nicer for you guys to be able to see what's going on on screen. Um, yeah, it was, but of course I've got my UI buttons and stuff that I didn't do. So between a combination of the two things, uh, this makes it really, really nice to be able to uh, to be able to change stuff within the core functions and then use Collision over the top of that to give you these additional options to be able to theme it how you like. So Collision UI works for Foundry V12. Make sure you get the right version. It works for Foundry version. 13 again make sure you get the right version of the mod just gives you that tweaking does it change functionality absolutely not it's just about changing that look and feel that user interface stuff but for some of you that's really important um, and again thematically uh, you might want to change it depending on the campaign you're running so that's it for this video. It's been a little bit of a weird one. Um, you know, things don't always go hugely smoothly for this. Uh, I did stumble over a couple of bits, but that was 100% me and nothing to do with the mod. Go check it out. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool, especially if you're still on version 30. Uh, sorry, still on version 12 like I am in my real game. I think it gives you a lot of options just to make your life nicer. Make it all shiny and pretty. Anyway. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment. If you're not subscribed, please do so. It really does help out the channel. It encourages me to keep going with these. And I will see you in the next one.